Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning, fundamentals and applications. In my last class, I discussed the concept of linear discriminant analysis that is LDA. In LDA, I have determined a best projection direction. For this, what I have considered, I maximize between class scatter and minimize within class scatter. And based on this, I have defined the criterion function and based on this, I can determine the best projection direction. LDA is a supervised technique because we considered class information. Today, I am going to discuss the same concept, the LDA, a linear discriminant analysis. This LDA can be extended for multiple classes and that is called the multiple discriminant analysis. So, today I am going to discuss the concept of MDA, that is the multiple discriminant analysis for C number of classes. And before going to that, let us consider one example. So, in this example, I am considering two classes and suppose samples for class omega 1. So, what are the samples x 1 is a two dimensional sample. So, the samples are 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, 3, 3, 6 and suppose 4, 4. So, I have 5 samples and similarly, suppose I am considering samples for class omega 2 samples for class omega 2. So, it is suppose x 2 and again we are considering two dimensional samples. So, samples are suppose 9, 10, 6, 8, 9, 5, 8, 7, and 10, 8. So, we are considering two classes and we are considering two dimensional samples for each of the classes. And corresponding to this, you can see the plot of these samples by MATLAB. So, corresponding to the class omega 1, you can see uh, the red samples and corresponding to the class omega 2, you can see the green samples. So, one sample point is not coming into this figure. So, uh, this red samples that belongs to the class omega 1. So, you can see the samples are 2, 4 and 2, 3 and 4, 2 and also uh, 3, 6 and also 4, 4. So, these are the samples belonging to the class omega 1 and these are the samples belonging to the another class that is omega 2. So, corresponding to this case, I have to find the, uh, the best projection direction I have to determine. So, the problem is I have to compute the LDA, the linear discriminant analysis LDA projection. I have to determine. So, we have to compute the LDA projection, what is the best projection I have to determine. So, corresponding to this, I have to determine the means, the class mean we have to determine. So, let us see how we can determine the class mean. So, move to the next slide. So, the class mean, class mean we can determine. Uh, first one is suppose mu 1 and that is nothing but 1 by n 1 number of samples x x belongs to the class omega 1 and corresponding to this I have 5 samples corresponding to the class omega 1. So, the samples are 4 2 plus 2 4 plus 2 3 plus 3 6 plus 4 4 
so we can compute this one so uh, this value will be 3 3.8 this is the mean uh, corresponding to the class omega 1 similarly i can determine the mean mu 2 and that is nothing but 1 by n 2 summation x x belongs to the second class that is omega 2 and in this case uh, it is 1 by 5 9 by 10 9 10 plus 6 8 plus 9 5 plus 8 7 plus 10 8 so five samples we are considering and corresponding to this the class mean is 8.4 and 7.6 this is the second mean mu 2 so we can determine means after this we can determine the covariance matrix of the first class so what is the covariance matrix covariance matrix of the first class so this is s1 summation x belongs to the class omega 1 and x minus mu 1 and x minus mu 1 transpose so this is the covariance matrix so this can be computed like this 4 2 minus 3 3.8 plus 2 4 minus 3 3.8 so after all these computations you can do the computations the computations I can show again uh, plus two three. minus 3 3.8 plus 3 6 minus 3 3.8 plus So finally, I am getting the covariance matrix of the class 1 that is 1 minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25 2.2. So this is the covariance matrix of the class 1, the first class. Similarly, we can determine the covariance matrix of the second class. So move to the next slide and that covariance matrix for the second class that is S2 we can determine uh, similarly so it is x minus mu 2 mu 2 is the mean of the second class transpose and finally after doing all these calculations you will be getting the covariance matrix for the second class is 2.3 0 0.05 minus 0. 0 0.5 3.3 so you can determine the covariance matrix for the second class after determining the this covariance matrix we can determine within class scatter matrix so what is the within class scatter matrix so that is sw SW is nothing but S1 plus S2. So if I add these two covariance matrix,
So, we are getting SW 3.3 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 5.5. So, this is the within class scatter matrix. After this, uh, we can determine the between class scatter matrix. Between class scatter matrix. That also we can determine, and that is nothing but SB is equal to mu 1 minus mu 2 and mu 1 minus mu 2 transpose. So, we have this values the mu 1 and mu 2 and based on this values uh, we can determine the SB. The value of SB will be 29.16, 20.5 20.52 and 14.44. So, that you can compute because you have mu 1 and mu 2 and from this just you can calculate and value uh, this SB the between class scatter matrix you can compute. After this uh, we have to determine the base projection direction. So, for base projection direction we have to consider the solution of the generalized eigenvalue problem. So, move to the next slide that is the solution we have to consider the solution of the generalized eigenvalue problem that already we discussed what is the generalized eigenvalue problem. for this solution what we need to consider for this solution S w inverse S b w is equal to lambda w. So, that we have to find the solution of this. So, that is nothing but S w inverse S b minus lambda i i is the, I is the identity matrix is equal to 0. So, this can be written like this. 3.3 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 5.5 and we are taking the inverse of this 29.16 point five two 14.44 minus lambda and we have to consider one identity matrix 1 0 0 1 and that should be equal to 0. So, after computation of this uh, just you have to do the computations. Uh, so, I will be getting 9.2213 minus lambda 4 6.4892.9794 minus lambda we are getting and that is equal to 0. So, after this uh, we have to do the solution of this. So, we will be getting lambda square minus 12.2007 lambda is equal to 0. So, that means that lambda lambda minus 12.2007 is equal to 0. So, corresponding to this I will be get corresponding to this I will be getting two eigenvalues. So, one is lambda 1, lambda 1 will be 0 and another is lambda 2. So, lambda 2 is 12.2007. So, I will be getting two eigenvalues. One is 0, another one is 12.2007 and I have to determine the base projection direction based on these eigenvalues. So, move to the next slide. 
So, we have to compute the LDA projection. So, based on this Eisen values. So, this is 9.22134.2339 6.4894 W1 width. So, 0 that corresponds to the this 0 that corresponds to the Eisen value lambda 1 and w 1 w 2 that is the weight vector because we have to compute the LDA projection the direction we have to determine and another one is 9.2213 is 12.2007 that corresponds to the second second Eisen value so corresponding to this uh, two equations i can determine w1 that is the one projection direction so one projection direction is w1 that's 0.5755 0 0.8178 so this is the weight vector that w1 we have computed w1 we have computed uh, for the Eisen value lambda 1 is equal to 0 and w2 also we can compute that is the w2 weight vector and that is computed based on lambda 2 and this w2 that is the direction the projection direction and that would be the optimum direction because we are considering the largest Eisen value. So, I have two Eisen values lambda 1 is equal to 0 and lambda 2 is equal to 12.2007. So, this largest, uh, so the largest Eisen value gives the best projection direction. So, that means the lambda 2 gives the best projection direction. So, that means I can write this statement, I can write the optimal, optimal projection is the one that gives maximum lambda that means corresponding to the, the maximum lambda that is the Eisen value I have to find the base projection direction. So, that means the largest Eisen value gives the best projection direction. So, this uh, we can also obtain directly. So, how to obtain it directly you can see what is the best projection direction I can obtain directly same result I will be getting. So, you can see in this example I am getting this is the best projection direction W2 and that I can obtain directly. So, move to the next slide. So, how to obtain it directly. So, because we know that the best projection direction W star is nothing but SW inverse mu 1 minus mu 2. So, this equation I know and corresponding to this I can compute this one 3.3 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3 5.5 inverse and I have to subtract mu 1 minus mu 2 3.38 minus 8.4 7.6. So, corresponding to this I will be getting the weight vector W star that is the optimum weight vector that is the direction. So, I am getting the same result 
as we obtain uh, in the previous slide. So, same result we are getting uh, in the previous slide you can see we obtain W 2 this is the optimum projection direction and directly also we can compute W star and we are getting the same result. So, this uh, can be shown pictorially. So, how to get the, the best projection direction. So, move to the next slide. In this case you can see uh, corresponding to the smallest eigen value I am showing the pink line that is the direction of projection. So, you can see the projection vector corresponding to the smallest eigen value and in this case you can see uh, the two classes the samples of the two classes will be overlapping if I consider that direction of the projection that is the pink direction if I consider and that is corresponding to the smallest eigen value and uh, that can be shown in this right figure also you can see here. So, if I consider the class conditional density this PDFs, so you can see and they are overlapping. So, that means it corresponds to bad separability. So, this is not a good separation, this is a bad separation. So, I have to consider the largest eigen value and corresponding projection direction I have to consider. So, I can show this one uh, into the next slide. So, here you can see uh, I am considering the largest eigen value and the corresponding projection direction that is the green colored. Uh, projection direction and corresponding to this you can see I am getting good separability between the samples of two classes and that you can see from this plot also and that you can obtain good separation between the samples uh, between two classes. That means you are obtaining good separations between the samples of two classes that is the concept of the best projection how, how can I obtain the best projection? I have to consider the largest eigen value and the corresponding the projection direction I can obtain. And if I consider that direction the projection directions, I will be getting the best separability between the samples of two classes. So, this is the concept of the LDA. This concept of the LDA that can be extended to uh, C number of classes. The C number of classes that uh, can be extended. So, let us see how it can be extended for C number of classes. So, the LDA for C classes, C number of classes. So, earlier we considered only two classes. The same principle can be extended to C number of classes and that is called multiple discriminant. analysis. So, this is called a multiple discriminant analysis that is LDA for C number of classes. So, now we have C number of classes we are considering now. So, now we have to obtain C minus 1 number of projections. So, that means to obtain to obtain C minus 1 projection directions, C minus 1 projections I have to determine and suppose this is y 1, y 2, y C minus 1. So, by means of uh, C minus 1 projection vector W i. So, W i is the projection vector and so, you can see to obtain C minus 1 projections y 1, y 2, y C minus 1 by means of by means of C minus 1 projection vectors projection vectors W i. So, this W i can be arranged by columns into a projection matrix. So, suppose the projection matrix the projection matrix is represented by W capital W that means what we are considering uh, this W i uh, can be arranged by columns into a projection matrix the projection matrix is W. So, that is nothing but 
we are considering these columns w1 w2 all these projection vectors we are considering so we have c minus 1 number of projection vectors so corresponding to this suppose yi that is a particular projection wi transpose x so that means y is equal to this w transpose x so in this case what is x this x is a vector and dimension is m cross 1 so this x is x1 up to xm and what is y c minus 1 that is the projection after the projection after the projection I am getting the projection vector so this is nothing but y1 y2 all these projections we are considering so we have c minus 1 number of projections we have to consider and what is this w w is a matrix that is m cross c minus 1 and that is nothing but w1 w2 so the columns we are considering the columns are nothing but the uh, the projection vectors so this is uh, the weight matrix so you can see what uh, we are considering we have this uh, input vector x is the input vector and y is the projection matrix and this w w is nothing but the projection matrix so this is the projection matrix so after this uh, what i need to consider i have to consider uh, that projection so how to do the projection so let us move to the next slide so we have n fisher vectors and we can stack them into one matrix uh, as follows so y i can write in terms of matrix w3 wtx that means uh, that means we have n fisher vectors and we can stack them into one matrix like this y is equal to w transpose x so where x is a matrix m cross n and what are the elements of this matrix the elements of this matrix are x 1 1 x 1 2 x 1 n so here this is x m 1 so this is a first feature vector and up to x2 x12 x m2 and this is x m n so dimension is m cross n and similarly what is the the projection matrix y is the projection matrix and dimension is c minus 1 cross n and that matrix will be y11 y11 so this column is yc minus 1 this is the first projection the second projection is y12 y2c minus 1 and like this y1n and this is yc minus 1n so this is the projection matrix we are getting dimension is c minus 1 cross n and what is the weight matrix the weight matrix is w and dimension is m cross c minus 1 that is already i explained so we have this the projection vectors w1 w2 w c minus 1 so this is the so this is the uh, projection matrix so after this what we have to consider in case of the two classes what we determine we determine within class scatter and similarly uh, in this case also we have to determine the within class scatter so what is the within class scatter so what is the within class scatter within class scatter is sw 
for two classes we computed like this S1 plus S2. So, this can be generalized for C number of classes. So, for C classes, for C classes, C classes, we can compute within class scatter SW like this i is equal to 1 to c, c number of classes. So, summation of s i. So, where this s i that is the within class scatter is nothing but x minus mu i and x minus mu i transpose and this x belongs to the class omega i and what is this mu i the mu i is the mean corresponding to the class omega i so it is 1 by n i summation x summation x and x belongs to the class omega i so mu i is the mean of the class omega i so like this we can determine the within class scatter matrix we can determine so this is the within class scatter matrix so this within class scatter matrix i can show in this figure uh, this uh, you can see that we have determined the within class scatter that is nothing but sw is summation si and i is equal to 1 to c so we can determine the within class scatter so what is si from the previous slide what we have obtained x belongs to the class omega i and x minus mu i and x minus mu i transpose. So, we can determine si like this and what is mu i that already I have explained in my previous slide. So, this is nothing but the mean corresponding to the class omega i. So, we are considering all the samples belonging to the class omega i. So, in this figure you can see, so here what is n i actually? n i is the number of samples uh, uh, corresponding to the class omega i. So, it is the number of samples, number of samples in class omega i. So, in this case we are showing this example of two dimensional features. So, in this illustration what we are considering the uh, two dimensional features we are considering that means we are considering m is equal to 2 and we are considering uh, three number of classes. For three classes you can see one is the red, one is the green, another one is the blue. I have shown the means one is mu 1, another one is mu 2 and the mu 3 corresponding to the class 3, the last class, three classes we are considering. And you can see I am showing the scatter within class scatter SW1, SW2 and SW3. Now after computing this within class scatter, I have to determine the between class scatter. So let us move to the next slide. So how to determine the between class scatter? So for two classes what we have determined, for two classes we have determined the between class scatter like this mu1 minus mu2, mu1 minus mu 2 transpose. So, for C number of classes uh, that we can also determine the between class scatter. So, we can measure the between class scatter with respect to the mean of all the classes. So, that means for C classes, for C number of classes, we can uh, measure the between class scatter with respect to the mean of all the classes. So, I can write like this S B is equal to so, I have C number of classes i is equal to C 1 to C and n i n i is the number of samples corresponding to the class omega i mu i mu and mu i this mu transpose. So, in this case what is actually mu? Mu means 1 by n. So, for all x we are considering that means for all feature vectors irrespective of the classes we are determining the mean. So, that means we are determining the total mean, total mean means we are considering for all the classes. 
So, in the figure you can see I have shown this one this is the mean that mean mu is computed for all the classes. So, that means for all x we are computing the mean and that is the mean of all the classes we are determining. So, that means in this case what is n? n is nothing but that that means all the samples of C classes. So, all the samples of C classes are considered that is the uh, n capital N. So, we can determine this and the mean the mean of all the classes we can determine and after this this mu i mu i can be determined this mu i can be determined that is corresponding to the class omega i. So, x belongs to the class omega i and this is x. So, what is n i now? n i is the number of samples number of samples number of data samples in class omega i. So, you can see here uh, in this figure I am computing the mean for all the classes and based on this mean I am determining the between class scatter. So, we can determine the between class scatter uh, what is the between class scatter that I can say like this it is a distance between uh, the mean of a particular class and the total mean the total mean is mu a mean of all the classes. So, like this you can see SB1, SB2, SB3 we can determine and these are the between class scatters and already I have explained how to determine the within class scatter that is SW1, SW2, SW3 that you can determine. So, one is the between class scatter another one is the within class scatter. So, in this figure it is clear so how to determine the within class scatter and the between class scatter. So, for determining the between class scatter we have to determine the mean of all the classes we have to determine that is the mu we have to determine and after this what we can consider we can define the mean vector of the projected sample uh, that is the projected sample is y. So, the mean vectors mean vectors for the projected samples we can determine the projected sample is y how to determine mu i tilde is nothing but 1 by n i and y the y belongs to the class omega i and and also we can determine the the total mean the mean of all the classes after the projection. So, after the projection we can determine so that is nothing but y and this y is for all the classes the all the classes we are considering that is the projected mean of all the classes. Now, uh, this uh, the scatter matrix for the projected sample y it can be determined like this. So, scatter matrix scatter matrix for the projected samples samples y can be determined like this s w tilde is nothing but summation i is equal to 1 to c s i tilde is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to c c number of classes we have to consider and y belongs to the class omega i. So, for all the classes we have to determine this. So, for all the classes I have to determine the scatter matrix. So, this is the within class scatter matrix and similarly we can determine the between class scatter matrix we can determine that is i is equal to 1 to c and i mu i tilde and mu mu i tilde and mu tilde transpose. So, we can determine the between class scatter matrix after the projection. 
So, for the two classes what we have determined you can see this for two classes we have obtained this one W transpose S W W that is uh, uh, we have expressed the scatter matrix of the projected samples in terms of the original samples. So, that means we obtain like this. So, S W we obtain like this and S B also we obtain like this W transpose S B W. So, for two classes we have considered like this for two classes. So, what is my objective? My objective is to I have to find the best projection direction that maximize the ratio of the between class to the within class scatter. So, I am repeating this what is the objective of the LDA or the multiple discriminate analysis? I have to find the best projection direction that maximizes the ratio of the between class to within class scatter. So, since the projection is no longer a scalar because now it is c minus 1 dimension. So, we have to use the determinant of the scatter matrix to obtain a scalar objective function. So, how to obtain the scalar objective function? So, move to the next slide. So, what will be the objective function corresponding to the c number of classes? So, s b tilde and s w tilde that is nothing but w transpose s b w w transpose s w w. So, you can see the projection is no longer a scalar because it has c minus 1 dimension. Then we use the determinant of the scatter matrix to obtain the scalar objective function. And after uh, determining this objective function, we have to find the best projection direction. We have to find, have to find, what we have to find? The projection, the projection we have to find, the projection and that is given by W star. That maximize this ratio, that maximizes the ratio. So, what is this ratio? The ratio is this. For two classes, how actually we have obtained the best projection direction? We solve the Eisen value problem and that is nothing but SW inverse S B W lambda W that we considered and where lambda is equal to J W that is a scalar. So, for C number of classes we have C minus 1 projection vectors. Hence, the Eisen value problem can be generalized to the C classes case as follows. So, for C classes what, what I have to consider? For C classes, we have to consider like this S to the power minus 1, S B and W i lambda i W i. So, where lambda i is equal to J W i that is also a scalar. And we are considering C number of classes i is equal to 1, 2, C number of classes C minus 1. So, that means what we are considering in two classes we are considering the Eisen value problem, the solution of the Eisen value problem, and lambda is a scalar. And in case of these C classes, we have C minus 1 projection vectors. Hence, the Eisen value problem can be generalized to the C classes. Uh, so, we have generalized like this. So, S w inverse S b w i is equal to lambda i w i. I have c minus 1 number of projection direction. So, it is 1 2 up to c minus 1 projection directions. So, it can be shown that the optimal projection matrix, the optimal projection matrix is the optimal projection matrix is projection matrix is w star. 
that is the optimal projection matrix. So, it can be shown that the optimal projection matrix is the one whose columns are the eigenvectors corresponding to the largest eigenvalues of the following generalized eigenvalue problem. So, that means, uh, we have to determine the optimal projection matrix and for this we are considering the generalized eigenvalue problem. What is the generalized eigenvalue problems? the generalized eigenvalue problem we have to consider because we have to determine the optimal projection matrix w star we have to determine and already I told you that uh, wha which one is the optimal projection matrix that is the one whose columns are the eigenvectors corresponding to the largest eigenvalue of the uh, generalized eigenvalue problem. So, this is the generalized eigenvalue problem S w inverse S b w star lambda w star. This is the generalized eigenvalue problem. So, move to the next slide. So, from the previous slide uh, you can see what is the generalized generalized eigenvalue problem. that is S w inverse S b w star that is the projection matrix the optimal projection matrix lambda w star. So, in this case where lambda is equal to j w star that is a scalar corresponding to this we can determine the optimum projection matrix that is w and if you see the columns this is the optimum projection vector corresponding to the class omega 1 this is the w 2 is the optimum projection vector uh, corresponding to the class omega 2 and like this we have c minus 1 number of projection directions and just we are putting in the columns and we are getting the matrix w star and that is the optimum optimal projection matrix w star is the optimal projection matrix. So, we can see how to determine w star. So, for c number of classes the principle is same we are extending the concept of the that simple LDA that is for the two classes that can be extended for C number of classes. So, this is the concept of the multiple discriminant analysis. In this class I explained the concept of LDA and I have shown how it can be extended for C number of classes and that is the multiple discriminant analysis. So, the concept is same I have to increase or I have to maximize between class scatter and I have to minimize within class scatter and that is the fundamental concept of multiple discriminate analysis. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.